My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Evelyn Marinov, and I'm calling from Dublin, Ireland, awesome. uh, where I live. So it's uh, it's actually night here after uh, 8 p.m. <laughs> uh, it's actually almost, what time is it? It's almost uh, noontime over here in L.A., so it's sun sunshine. We're all awake. It's, it's fantastic. Very nice. <laughs> so let's dive into it. Um, I know you talk a lot about confidence. Let's dissect right. the word confidence. What does confidence mean? Right. So um, that's a very important question. And thank you for asking it because people often confuse. So there are two main terms that if you read a lot of articles online and books about confidence, so they talk about self-esteem and they talk about confidence and some use them interchangeably, but they're not the same. So the difference is that self-esteem basically is internal. So it means how you feel about yourself. Do you like yourself? Uh, what do you think? Do you think you're a worthy person? Confidence, on the other hand, is external. So basically it means, do you believe in your self-opinions? Do you believe that you can achieve the goals that you set out for yourselves? Um, so it's, it's very much internal and external. So that's the difference between self-esteem and confidence. But nevertheless, it, they're both very important because um, basically, as we all know, so if we don't believe in ourselves, we cannot succeed in anything that we want, right? The success of any of our undertakings depends on how much we believe that we can actually achieve it. So pretty important topic. How do we create that belief that we are going to make it? Well, the good news is that there are many ways to do it, right? So there are many techniques that you can use to build confidence or self-esteem, I should say, the self-beliefs. Um, but you have to work on it. So it's like, I always say that it's very much like going to the gym, right? You have, if you want to have results, you have to work on it. You cannot go to the gym one time and then say, you know, that's it. I have a six pack and I'm done and that's forever. So it just takes a, a consistent work to get to that point, get consistent, um, I guess, so there are different, different ways. So I'll give you my, my uh, favorite ones. And just to give you a bit of a background, so many years ago, I actually dealt with uh, low self-esteem. So this is what caused me to, to go and, and do some research on the topic to try to kind of help myself. And now, as I can say, I was probably my first client, right? So I did a lot of reading um, self-improvement books um, a lot of research on the topic and um, tried many different different things and this is what I found to actually work for me, right? So one of the main things is um, visualization. We all know that, right? Every, every book uh, pretty much on self-improvement talks about it. So Napoleon Hill talks about it. The book The Secret talks about it. Um, Wallace Wattles in the, the Science of Getting Rich talks about it. So um, you know, it, it's very important. So basically, and we all know what it means, just you have to spend a few minutes every day to visualize the person that you want to become in the future and bring that image to the present. So the idea is that if you, let's say you want to be a successful entrepreneur or a successful writer, so just see yourself as this person and then your actions today are going to follow um, that uh, that dream, or it's not really a dream, or that that image that you have of, of yourself in your mind. So that's one thing that I have really found to work. So you have to imagine yourself being confident, and you know, doing all the things that we want you want to do with confidence. So that's one thing. Then we have uh, something linked to it: priming. So priming, a lot of famous people talk about it. I, and um, you probably know uh, Tony Robbins is a big, big fan of priming. So what it means is that 
again, you spend a few minutes, I do it every morning. So you prime your mind with, with strong words. So let's say you think about, so you're confident, you're ambitious, you're focused, like everything that you want to be. Just set your mindset in the right, um, I guess, way to, to face the day and all the challenges, right? So that's another thing. Also something that I came up with, so I call it the one, one, one principle really works for me to build confidence. So it's, um, so every day say one gratitude. So we all know the, the benefits of gratitude, right? There is lots of research out there, how, uh, why it works and, and that it works, it's proven. So, but what it does for confidence specifically, gratitude is that it makes you focus on what you have rather than, rather than what you don't have. Because one of the main causes of low self-esteem is because you compare yourself to other people and you feel less worthy because they have more than you. And you, you think that, you know, you know I'm not a, a person of value because I don't drive a, an expensive car, I don't live in a big house, but that's not true. In fact, actually, there is um, a theory, uh, a psychology theory called a social comparison theory, and it says that not all comparison is bad. So you can use comparison to actually motivate yourself, but to the right means. So if you compare yourself to, let's say, I don't know, somebody rich, and you say, you know, I want to be rich like him, um, you only see the tip of the iceberg because you don't know how they got there, right? You don't see all the, the hard work that they put into it. So basically you have to want to do better, but for the right reason to better yourself, not to, you know, uh, just be like the Joneses. So, um, so that's one of the one on one, one principle, one gratitude. So the other thing is, um, commit to one thing that you're going to do today and make sure that you do it. So what this does is for your confidence is that um, creates a track record of success. And that's very important for uh, creating beliefs in yourself. So if you set a goal for yourself and you make everything possible to achieve it, even if it's a small one, so let's say today, I'm going to achieve to, to set a goal of walking one mile and I make sure that I do it. So you feel good about yourself and you start believing that actually you can do the things that you want to do and, and aspire to do. So you just create little by little more challenging goals. Um, and the third thing is um, think of one strength that you have and make sure that you use it. And again, um, how this ties to confidence is that it makes you think uh, and focus on your strengths rather than your weaknesses. Because again, people that have low self-esteem, most often they focus on what they lack versus what they have. So say, um, for instance, um, you, uh, uh, you want to be a famous writer, right? So, um, so you, let me think of an example, just one second. Um, okay, so you, one of your strengths is writing, right? So make sure that, um, you know, at work, do something that's related to writing. So I'm good at writing, I, I like writing. So at work, I make sure that, you know, I write good emails to, to clients or um, when, I, uh, when people reach out to me that, you know, I, I try to understand them and, and uh, phrase my emails in a, in a way that, uh, you know, j just uh, to, to relate to them. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty bad at, at public speaking, so I try not to go there if I can avoid it and try to work on that. But, uh, you know, if I focus on my strength as writing, I have a pretty high confidence. But if I focus on my strength or non-strength of public speaking, probably I would think low of myself. So you have to know where you stand on those things and how you can, and if something is, let's say, if public speaking is not your strength, but it's important to your future and where you want to go, then you have to start working on it and improve on, on yourself. So, um, couple, so those are two things. Uh, so can you fake confidence? Uh, can you fake confidence? Yeah. 
So the short answer is no, you can't. Uh, and that's my opinion. However, um, again, there is a silver lining. So again, I see confidence people do it all the time. Yeah, so basically when you read uh, online, one of the first things that, uh, you know, how to build confidence, people will advise you, you know, fake it till you make it, right? And that's a very wrong advice because in order to build a sustainable confidence, you cannot fake it. Um, you have to feel it. Um, so let's say you can... you can. But your subconscious mind doesn't know if it's true or not. If you keep repeating it to yourself, eventually it's going to be, you're going to start believing it, no? To a point, probably, but I still think that you first have to believe in yourself and feel it on, like, feel it, feel worth it because you because it all starts with your self image so, and your subconsciousness. So if you don't see yourself as worth it, um, you know, I don't know how long it will take you to actually fake it until you start feeling it. So I think probably the better way to go around it is to to start doing these exercises to actually improve your self-esteem. And then once you start believing in yourself internally, you will start acting more I agree with that totally. I'm just thinking about there are some exceptions where maybe our environment is not there. I mean, Evelyn, here's the... I mean, I don't know how to, maybe I have never experienced it myself. That's why I'm not understanding it. That could be the case. But if my surrounding is negative, things that I've done have not gone through the right way. And I don't believe in myself. Right. When you say what your strengths are, I can come up with 10 different reasons telling you that I don't have any strengths. So then, therefore, that formula might get stuck over there. So... Can I say my strengths are, I don't know, so it could be anything. Because if we're talking about anything, I mean, I have to be a writer, then I got to know that my skills are good. And if I'm writing, my, mm -hmm. I can believe in that and I can say that. So it's just a little bit of a, I'm just saying for the person that is going through a lot of challenges or the valleys of life right now, mm -hmm. that first statement of believing yourself might actually be hard. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So it, it certainly goes both ways. Um, and for instance, like if you if you go to a job interview and you want to get the job and you don't feel confident or self-esteem or self-belief on the inside, you can certainly pretend to feel confident on the outside and maybe, you know, people will believe you and you'll get the job. Or you need to, you know, be confident in, in the moment and, you know, ace that presentation that's very important to your future. Yes, you certainly can do it, and you can pretend and pretend, but we also have all the stories that you've certainly read about, you know, all these famous people, celebrities that have all the success, and they keep saying, you know, yeah, I never had, uh, you know, the feeling that I was worth it, but I was faking it all the time, and ultimately, um, there are actually studies out there that say that if you fake it for too long, it creates a, a a mental um, distress and clash with your inner beliefs. And if you do it for, uh, for long enough, actually um, you have, um, you experience, you know, mental health issues, physical issues, uh, your productivity decreases. So yeah, certainly you can, you can start acting confident until you, you know, uh, become confident, but you cannot have one, uh, without the other, you have to work on both. Does it have anything to do with fulfillment, Evelyn? If I'm feeling confidence, would I get the feeling of fulfillment more? Because this is what I'm thinking. So many of the people that are in are, are in spotlights, actor, actresses, uh, politicians, individuals that are in the public right. eyes, right? And they're serving, they're doing some type of a service. They must have the confidence to be able to do that, right? My question is why so many of them have high ratio of using substance, alcohol, drugs, suicide, all of these different things. Is there a correlation between that and confidence? Right. So, you know, actually there were studies about that because back in the day, uh, there was a whole um, self-esteem movement. I think it was in the 70s in the U.S. where there were 
saying that, you know, uh, in school they have to teach students to be uh, higher self-esteem and this basically will solve everything. So there will be less crime, less teenage pregnancies, less drug abuse, all of that. So they started doing that and after a few years they, uh, they did studies and they established that that's not true. Um, so higher self-esteem doesn't actually lead to all these social benefits. So yeah, um, when you help people, it's actually proven that you feel good about yourself and uh, probably that increases your self-esteem and your confidence, but having high confidence doesn't really lead you to, you know, um, more fulfillment. Uh, prevent all this, yes. No, to fulfillment it does, but it doesn't like higher trying to boost your self esteem is not going to prevent you from you know not using drugs. Probably you know um, yeah, it, it's complicated. So if you help others, so let's say you you go and volunteer, so it's proven that actually that's one of the ways to increase your self esteem because when you um, and it's really it's really interesting because self esteem is something about the self, right? You have to feel good about yourself, but it's also about, sometimes they say that you shouldn't focus too much on yourself because you, you become too self-conscious. You become very sensitive about your weaknesses and you become very perfectionist. So you have to then focus outward on other people and try to help them. And this is one way. How you Evelyn, I know why they yourself. say don't, don't. I know who says don't focus on yourself, especially the ones that are married. They know if they focus on themselves, their wives are going to get on their case. So I understand where that research came from. <laughs> Anybody who's married understands that concept. Why are you laughing? That was a serious research I've done. <laughs> I understand, yes. <laughs> you're going to get me you're going to get me in trouble, Evelyn. You're going to get me in trouble. See, you're in Ireland. I have to deal with it in LA, okay? You're far. You're going to go to sleep right now. You don't have to deal with it. I have to go deal with it. Okay, good. I'm glad that you're smiling. It's cool. No problem. That's fine. Uh, okay, so here's my other question for you. When it comes to self-confidence, what's the difference between mm -hmm. self-esteem and confidence and knowing who you are? Are they the same? Uh, they're not the same, but certainly you need to know who you are in order to have the proper self-esteem because um, self-acceptance actually is one of the, the ways to improve your self-esteem. And this means that you have to know the good, the bad, and the ugly about yourself. So it's not only, you know, uh, loving your, your good sides, but also you have to know your weaknesses um, your shortcomings and be okay with that and accept it because nobody's perfect. We know that and everybody has good and bad sides. Everybody has shortcomings. So it's very important that you know yourself enough to recognize that and also to accept it and, you know, still be able to, uh, to do all the things that you want to do with those shortcomings. Yeah, I mean, I figured if, I mean, okay, so here's a question for you. When I ask yeah. who you are, or when we ask somebody who you are, typically they say their name. And then I say, no, who are you? Uh, then they go into saying, you know, their last name, you know, all of this stuff. And, and Bob Proctor talks about this. I know Napoleon Hill touches yeah. up on it, and a lot of other people talk about it. So knowing who you are, I think, eliminates a lot of these other challenges that they come in. So I think that's like in the roots of it. When you know who you are, I mean... Think about it like this. If I say, Evelyn, you're low IQ, it could go two ways, right? You could either accept that or you could be like, what is Vahid saying? Is he crazy? Is he on drugs? Is he smoking? Did he wake up on the wrong side? Like, is he, you see what I'm saying? Because you know who you are and you know the amount of IQ you got. So when I say something stupid like that, which a lot of people have opinions of you that are stupid, right? When they say that, a lot of individuals that don't know who they are, they accept it. That becomes the reality. When it becomes the reality, right. then it changes everything else. So if you mm -hmm. can just stop it 
and put that wall up right there, knowing who you are, and you repel those type of uh, conversations and informations and non-productive uh, information that's coming to you, then I think it eliminates a lot of the other problems we have. I mean, that's what I think what should happen to kids. If kids know who they are, I don't think they'll be able to get bullied, no? Will they be able to get bullied? Probably. Probably, but you know, it's uh, at this age, self-esteem is not, well, they say, some, there's some studies over there that say that self-esteem is established by the age we're five, but um, I can't still, you know, we have the, the problem of bullying and peer opinions in school, and we also have, there are also studies that say that uh, this type of attitude, if you're bullied, for instance, it carries throughout your adulthood and, and it impacts your self-esteem. So it's easier said than done, actually, to, you know, say when you're, I don't know, 10 years old, I know that's not true. Because, um, you know, at this age, and even teenagers, so many of them depend on, you know, their appearances, how others view them, uh, if they're cool in school, um, and all of that. So this, this, a lot of this forms their self-image, and it really morphs into their self-opinions, and this is how they become as adults. And this is why I think that part of the, the self-esteem solution is to try to actually go back in time, and no matter how painful it is, and try to think about the reason why you have self low self-esteem, because there are, many, there are many different reasons. We all have different um, histories and different backgrounds and all of that. So uh, figuring out the reason can really help you to kind of build your health esteem, self-esteem faster. So let's say you're bullied in school and, and you figure out that this is one of the reasons why you have low self-esteem. So basically you can work on, um, you know, uh, repairing your self-image, seeing that, you know, the past is not the present. If, um, say, you... Um, um, had uh, bad parents and they told you you're not worth it, uh, you know, you grew up thinking about uh, you're not worth it. So identifying the root is really very important to be able to figure out the, the way to uh, to remedy it and, and go forward. Evelyn, how do people find you? Uh, actually, a good place to start will be my uh, website, so evelynmarinov.com, M-A-R-I-N-O-F-F, -F. and it has all the other information there on my social media. I also have um, lots of articles about how to improve self-esteem, so check it out. Awesome. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time this afternoon being with us. Hopefully, we'll be able to do it because that's a big topic. And, and I'm very interested well, in having Thank you for the opportunity. Definitely. And, and just to finish, Evelyn said, fake it till you make it, uh, till you read her materials first. So don't stop faking it. <laughs> read her materials, then stop faking it, because then people are going to say, oh, you ruined Feel it. Feel it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> so fake it, but then at the, the same time, go to our website, check out the articles, and then stop faking it. I just want to put that in there to just exactly. you know, don't stop what you're doing right now. Just pick it, but then go study it and get that. No, I agree with you 100%. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for taking this. So here's my question. In Dublin, do they speak, do, does everybody speak English over there? Is that like a second language or is that like a first language? So it's the official language. So they have two official languages. So one is English. The other one is Irish. It's called Gaelic but uh, it has nothing similar to English. Uh, and it's only spoken in few parts of the country. And it's actually mandatory in school, so everybody has to study the two languages. I see. I got it. I just didn't know, so I wanted to find out if, if that's yeah. the case and everything else. I, I thank you so much for being here. Hopefully, we can do more. Stay safe. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Talk Bye. to you later. Bye-bye. Talk to you later.